Hello my soccer universe, better get this video in fast because we have midweek games uh, coming and then everything changes so whatever I might tell you now might be old news by yeah Wednesday. Just let me adjust the light a little bit, so uh, now a little bit later. But I have actually quite some exciting news. I won today two tickets for the cup semi-final here in Austria between Lusk and Rapid. I'm very happy about that one. And so, yeah, I'll be going to that game. And I'm not sure what I will talk about in the video on Thursday um, because I won't have seen much. But, you know, uh, live soccer is something I don't get to see that often these days. So I'm very, very happy about that one. I'm wearing my Liverpool shirt that I reviewed earlier this week and I even was wearing uh, this morning. So it's evening now. Uh, any Monday night games, especially the one between Arsenal and Newcastle, is not in yet uh, but I'm gonna talk uh, about the possible implications as we go through this video and let's get started right in the Premier League where we had the following results the first game of the weekend was Fulham against Manchester City we talked about it was a 2-0 win for Fulham Brighton lost at home to Southampton Southampton actually getting out of trouble slowly Burnley Wolverhampton 2-0 Crystal Palace as we will see relegates Huddersfield 2-0 so that's probably the first team where we have a definite decision about the relegation or championship. And it's kind of uh, interesting that this it's a relegation team that is the first one to be determined. Because I'm usually quite... Very often you have already in early April... Uh, not very uh, frequently you have in early April, April there's already a championship decider. Which we don't have this year, but it might come soon in France and in Italy. Leicester wins 2-0 against Bournemouth, Manchester United, and I honestly haven't seen most of these games on highlights, so I'm really running through it. I heard that Manchester United didn't have a great performance against Watford, but they managed a 2-1 win. Everton, I saw that, gets a relatively easy win 2-0 at West Ham United. Chelsea with a lucky last-minute win against Cardiff, where Cardiff actually was hard done by as well. And of course the big game between Liverpool and Spurs. That was definitely the big matchup of the weekend. And we have uh, Liverpool winning that one, 2-1. Probably deserved victory overall, but, you know, Spurs was well in the game and it could have ended in a tie. I mean, the winning goal for Liverpool was definitely a fluky one. So Firmino, Moura and Alderweireld scored those goals and it was an own goal by Alderweireld. Which sets up the following table, uh, and again, Arsenal Newcastle is not yet in the books. Uh, we have the top two, Liverpool and City, and it's really amazing. Liverpool has only lost one game, but they are um, only two points ahead of City, who has a game in hand, and it's all down to uh, not having, not having won as many games, but um, you know, draws, 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 draws. So seven draws, that's kind of a lot. Uh, Spurs, so that's those are top two and championship uh, according to 538, 59% for City, 41% um, Liverpool. Everyone else is basically uh, out of it, other champion, but that's not a big surprise, I would say. Um, Tottenham is third with 61 points, United with the win also draws level 61, Arsenal at the moment with 60. However, they have a game in hand, um, and if they win today, they will leapfrog uh, Spurs and United, and then they will sit there at um, 63 points. If it's a draw, then it's a three-way tie, and we've also Chelsea at 60 points. If they lose, well, then uh, they will sit close to Chelsea. Chelsea is now in sixth spot, which probably will give them the Europa League qualification. And then the rest, Wolves 44, Leicester 44, Everton 43, and Watford 43. So Leicester and Everton go ahead. The Hammers drop also uh, with 42 points. Bournemouth 38, uh, Palace 36. Newcastle can move um, level with Bournemouth today if they would win at Arsenal. Not very likely, but you know. <laughs> you will probably laugh at me because now you will see the result already. Um, Brighton 33, Southampton 33, Burnley 33, those seem safe and then Cardiff might have a chance 
I think it's a slim chance uh, with 28 points. Fulham 17 is probably close to being the next team where we can reach, reach, reach a decision. Huddersfield is out of the running. Um, quickly for the top six, um, the 538 chances for making the Champions League uh, is Spurs 63%, Arsenal 60 Chelsea 42 and Man United are only 34, mainly down to the fact that United doesn't have a great rating there. And for relegation, Fulham is an almost certainly Cardiff City is 84% relegated. Uh, basically, relegation, so Stone starts at Southampton, which only 1% chance of being relegated. Brighton 5%, Burnley 9%, Cardiff, as I said, 84%. Okay, let's go to the next big league, and that is La Liga, uh, where we had. A few interesting games, but honestly, not that much happening in the table, as we will see. Uh, Girona, despite being 1-0 up, uh, loses to Bilbao, 2-1. Uh, Leganes wins at Getafe, 2-0. Uh, that's, I think, what it is, a local derby of Madrid suburbs. Uh, and that's a first, how, 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 how to say, downer for Getafe in a long time. Because we know that Getafe is kind of this surprise team of the uh, season and probably will get a Champions League spot. We'll see about their chances soonish. Barcelona, Espanyol 2 0. Messi, 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 Messi. I, all, all I can say, if you haven't seen the highlights, check out the. It's a. You, you can make an R. I'm going to Panenka free kick, what he did there. And it's the second time that I see someone in the wall running back to defend a Messi free kick. They have a better chance at defending. Uh, very interesting tactic. Uh, Celta wins 3-2 against Villarreal after being down 2-0 at the halftime. And that has quite some uh, imp implications because uh, now Villarreal is pulled back into relegation. And Celta gets a, a much-needed win. Alves losing at home to Atletico Madrid 4-0 is also a big one. Again, I didn't watch many highlights this um Weekend, Niguez, Diego Costa, Morata and Partey are the scorers. So Morata gets back on the score sheet. Let's quickly check the Celta via Real. Um, yeah, Aspas is back. I mean, 15 minutes, it was 2-0 for Via Real and then Aspas, Maxi Gomez and Aspas from a penalty in the 86th turning around. Uh, Levante Eibar, 2-2. Uh, Rayo Betis, also 1-1. One, one. So, you know, uh, the teams on the bottom are making noise that's for sure Sevilla Valencia Valencia wins uh, this in Sevilla so she probably could have worn also wonderful Sevilla shirt here uh, Parejo with a, a pan pound in the uh, stoppage time of the first half Real Valladolid leads Real Sociedad 1-1 and Real Madrid with a really hard fought win against Huesca who took the lead uh, Real Madrid turned the game around, another equalizer and in the 89th minute Bonsema gets the win. So pretty hard fought uh, that one was. Let's look at the standings. Uh, Barcelona clear in front, I mean that was not uh, a surprising. Atletico also seems safe for the Champions League, has a slim chance of catching Barcelona. But for that they need to beat Barcelona first. Real Madrid 57, I think is pretty much out of it. Getafe, now is the, and, but those three also, I mean 69, 59, 57, those three are th the three Champions League spots are taken. Uh, I think there's not gonna, much going to happen. But then for the fourth one, there is Getafe at 46 points, Alaves at 44, and Valencia at 46. Those are the ones that have a serious chance of making it in there. Actually, um, Getafe 30% chance, 25% chance for Valencia 5, 38 gives Alaves only 7% chance and Sevilla 31% uh, chance. I'm not sure if I would subscribe to that because uh, Getafe 46, Alaves 44, Valencia 43 and Sevilla 44, 43. It's pretty open and Sevilla is in my opinion falling quite some. They of course have a great rating so that's why they are uh, giving him 31%. I honestly would give Alaves a much higher percentage. But you know, Valencia's, if Valencia gets rolling, I would give them the fourth Champions League spot too, too, to be honest. But it would be fun to see Getafe in the Champions League. Um, other teams, we have um, Bilbao with 40 points, Betis with 40, and Real Sociedad runs out the first top half with 37 points. Um, yeah, those teams are kind of in the middle of nowhere. 
Uh, same goes for Abar uh, with 36, Leganes 36, um, Girona 34, Espanyol 34. Espanyol is really having a rough season and you know now we just entered the relegation zone. Real Valladolid 30, Villarreal 29, Celta 28, Rayo 24, Huesca 22. I mean Huesca and Rayo I think really will have the biggest trouble staying in the league. 84% uh, that they are relegated for uh, Uesca, 82 for Rayo. But then Celta, 56%. Villarreal, 29%. Vitaly, 28%. Levante, 14%. And Espanyol, Girona, both around 2.5-3%. So, um, yeah, I mean, still looks for Celta, but Celta made a move and uh, is within one point of Villarreal. So it's definitely something possible of happening there. Uh, where shall we go next? Uh, let's go to the Bundesliga because there's also some interesting um, results happening. We have Hoffenheim beating Leverkusen 4-1. That's a huge result. Dortmund getting a very late win against Wolfsburg. I mean, it was tied for a, lo a lo long time. Then in the 90th, Paco Alcacer gets uh, the first goal and then he makes another one four minutes later in stoppage time. So... He saves Dortmund against Wolfsburg. Um, and since we said Freiburg and Bayern only manage a 1-1, this means Dortmund is now ahead, ahead in the standings. Bremen gets a 3-1 against Mainz. Uh, Düsseldorf beats Gladbach. Gladbach is also in raw form at the moment. They are 3-0 at halftime. Düsseldorf has a great uh, return leg so far. Uh, they were atrocious in the first half of the season and now they are slowly coming back and are performing actually great. Nürnberg gets a win against Augsburg. That that was a long time in making. Leipzig smashes Hertha 5-0. Schalke can win again. 1-0 at Hannover. And Frankfurt beats Stuttgart 3-0. Which makes the table look as follows. Let's look at uh, the top we said. Dortmund 63. Bayern 61. And we have on Saturday. Direct duel between those two in Munich. So uh, my turn around right there. Leipzig, 52 points, gets the Champions League spot, uh, probably quite likely. Uh, and then Frankfurt is now in fourth, and I think Frankfurt looks also poised to get that fourth spot, because Gladbach just keeps dropping. I mean, they were second at halftime, and now they're already down to fifth. Really, really tough uh, spot they're in at the moment at 47. But still with the cushion over Werder uh, and Leverkusen, 42, 42. There's also Wolfsburg in there uh, with 42. Hoffenheim is 41. Those are the ones that have a decent shot at the European spots. Let's look at the 538 standings. They would favor Bayern 70, 69% of winning the title over uh, Dortmund, which is only 30 30%. The rest is just by assimilation to the other teams. Those two will also make the Champions League. And then we have Leipzig 9, 90% for the Champions League spot, uh, Gladbach 23%, Leverkusen 9%, Hoffenheim 6%, and Wolfsburg 2%. They don't uh, think much of Bremen, so. That remains uh, interesting to see. Uh, Hertha is in this midfield. The German midfield, I think, is slim. There are four teams arg arguably in this. Hertha at 35, Fortuna at 34, Freiburg at 32, Mainz at 30. Schalke moves up a little bit. 20, and this is now where the relegation zone starts. Schalke at 26, 3% uh, chance of getting relegated. Augsburg 25, 6% chance of getting relegated. Stuttgart at 20, has a 28% chance, and Nuremberg and Hannover seem to be with 16 and 14, the ones that probably most certainly will get relegated. The saving grace for Stuttgart is that they have a match against the third place team from the second German league, um, which at the moment, let's see, uh, I think it's Köln and uh, Hamburg uh, that going up, and Union Berlin would be on the uh, relegation spot with Paderborn and St. Pauli also having a say and probably even Heidenheim also having a say in that one. So that's definitely gonna be interesting. So that's Germany. Let's go to Italy. I'm gonna look at a few leagues today uh, just because we have a few interesting ones going. Um, Italy. Yeah, it was not my weekend in Italy. Uh, Cagliari winning 3-0 on Friday. That was uh, nice to see. I mean, Kievo is probably re re relegated and they will soon be a certainty on that one. 
Udine winning Genoa, I like to see that one. You would then beat Empoli and Sampdoria beat Milan. Uh, we already talked at length about this. Atalanta wins at Parma 3-1. I just want to see whether they took the lead also. No, Giovinio gives the Parma the lead, but then three by Atalanta. Uh, Roma Napoli talked about that one. 4-1 for Na Napoli. Roma is... It's so funny how the chaos clubs shift. Uh, at first it was... Um, I, you could say arguably Milan was first the chaos club, then it got Roma, maybe Roma was in before, Lazio a little bit, Inter a little bit, it always keeps shifting about those teams, and there's probably more drama than there should be around them. Spal gets a win at Frosinone, uh, which is good for them, Fiorentina only manages to draw at home to Torino, uh, despite an early lead through Simeone, Bologna beats Sassuolo 2-1, and Lazio gets the win at Inter, which is a huge win for them. And they still have a game at home to Udine in hand. Um, we know who's going to be champion. That's going to be Juve. That's more or less a done deal with 78 points on top of the table. Napoli 63 also looks safe in second. Uh, and then Champions League. It is, it is tight again. We have Inter 53, Milan 51, Lazio 48. But Lazio has a game in hand. And that's... Uh, the worrisome part with if they win that game against Udine, they're level on points with Milan. Atalanta also 448, so they're also getting back in this mix. They're only within uh, three points of Milan. Roma dropping off 47 and really is not is shaky. I mean, seventh spot, depending. We have in the cup final, uh, semi final, we have Atalanta, Fiore, Fiorentina, where Fiorentina holds uh, no, where Atalanta holds the advantage because it ended 3 3 with Florence. And Milan Lazio, as long as Fiorentina doesn't get the final uh, or wins the uh, or doesn't win the cup, I think Roma at seventh is safe, but it is it is tight. Uh, Sampdoria 45, Torino 45, Fiorentina 30. I think Fiorentina is out of it, unfortunately, because uh, they are really a, such a nice squad to watch. As for Champions League spots, uh, 538 has Inter at 74%, Lazio at 42%, and Milan also at 42%. Um, and that's also how they are rated. Milan is still a little bit off. 24% uh, for Atalanta, Roma 12%, Sampdoria 4%, Torino 3%. That's basically uh, it. And then let's look at the bottom half of the table. Genoa 33, Cagliari 33, Parma 33, Sassuolo 32 I gotta say, I mean, there's a chance that those teams uh, get into trouble, but I honestly don't see it. Um, relegation zone to me starts at Spal with 29, Udine 28, Bologna 27, Empoli 25, Frosinone with 17, Kievo with 11 are pretty much out of it. And that's exactly what I see here. We have uh, Kievo almost a certainty, Frosinone 97%, Empoli 48%, Bologna 18% of being relegated, same as Udine and Spal 14%. And the rest is between the upper two teams. Let's have a quick look at Ligue 1. France. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. I mean, it is pretty clear where we are standing with Ligue 1 in terms of Champions League. And we already know that uh, PSG has already secured qualification for the Champions League uh, that early in the season. But it's just, they are so dominant. Rennes Lyon, uh, 1 0 for Lyon. Marseille Angers ended 2 2. Uh, Amiens Bordeaux goalless. Dijon Nice, um, 1 0 for Nice. Uh, Monaco Cao, 1 0 for Cao. Big win for Cao, I would say. Nantes Lille, uh, 2 3. PSG wins in Toulouse, 1 0. And we have um, a one game tonight, Saint Etienne Nîmes, uh, that we will see. That sets the table up as follows. PSG now are still with one game uh, back. 80 points, a uh, little 60, so big drop-off. And Lyon 56, I think those will be the top three. Marseille uh, holds at the moment four spot at 48, Saint Etienne 46, Reims 46. Yeah, I think Reims probably has a chance. <coughs> Maybe Nice can also get in there. I'm not sure about uh, Montpellier anymore with 42. Rennes, 41. Strasbourg is definitely out with 39. Let's look at the chances here. 95% of making Champions League for Lille. 93 for Lyon. And 5% for Marseille. 5% for Saint-Saëns and Etienne. So that doesn't come too surprising. Um, 
Then we have, as I said, Montpellier 42, Rennes 41, Strasbourg 39, and now the bottom half, Angers 37, Nîmes 37. Um, where does the relegation zone start? <laughs> it's actually a pretty clear picture. Um, Bordeaux 35, Toulouse 32, Nantes 31, and Monaco 30, Amiens 30. I think those are relatively safe because Cao, there's the drop, 23, Gargot 22, and Dijon 21. And that's pretty much what 530 is saying. Dijon, 86% being relegated count, 67, Guingamp, 57, and then only 5 and 4% for Amiens and Monaco, respectively, 2% for Toulouse. So, uh, looks pretty clear. I want to uh, tag on two more leagues, the one, um, namely Portugal and the Netherlands. I want to start in Portugal and then we'll talk about the Netherlands because there's really uh, interesting stuff happening. We have here the results of the um, last week's round, where the big one is Porto beating Braga 3-2. So that basically eliminates, I think, Braga from contention for the championship. Um, Sporting 3-1 at Chavez and uh, Benfica 1-0 against Tondela. I don't think there's anything... There's an old uh, Boavista against Belenenses. That's a Porto-Lisbon uh, derby, but a very, very minor one I, I would say uh, this means Benfica still in the lead with 66 points thanks to goal differential Porto second also with 66 points Sporting and Braga as I said both with 58 points I know it is only 8 points but I don't think uh, it's going anywhere uh, I think it's between Benfica and Porto and um, that's about it and at the moment Benfica holds the upper hand 56% according to 538 Sporting 44% and then let's go to the Netherlands before we finish it all up. Uh, where we also had the big result uh, with Ajax winning 3-1 against um, PSV. This means now level on points. PSV 67, Ajax 65, Alkmaar 50, uh, Feyenoord 4, 47, Utrecht 43, uh, Heracles 42 and Vitesse 41. And I'm reading those because all these teams are always capable of taking a few spots from Ajax or uh, PSV. I don't know um, who they have, have, have been playing. Here are just the results also from uh, the Dutch league. Feyenoord losing 3-2 to Utrecht. It tells you a little bit that the league is actually... I know, they're the big two. Feyenoord, I guess, wants to be in there, but he's, he's, he's not quite. But then there are also some other big teams... Uh, that can always uh, have at least a say in who becomes champion. So, 538 is split on the two of, uh, between Ajax and PSV. It's 50 50. If I look at the similar points, they get 84 points for uh, PSV and 83 for Ajax. So, um, probably a slight, the slightest of advantage to PSV. But that's going to be a title race that's going to go down the line. Did I forget anything? We went through England, Spain, we went um, Germany, Italy, France, Portugal, and Netherlands. Seven leagues in that one. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little look through the leagues and the results that were in there. Um, let me know which leagues I should look at, probably at the end of this week. Um, I think there might be some interesting ones other than... The big five, but I think the Netherlands and poor poor Portugal to me are kind of the next level leagues. Well, the Netherlands had had a, a, a rough page. I mean, Austria is ahead of the Netherlands. Um, in in Austria, the title race will decide, I guess, on Sunday whether there will be one or there won't be one. Because Lask is playing at home to Salzburg, four points uh, difference between the two of them. If Lask wins, they have one point behind Salzburg. Then it's really game on. I would still say. Very firmly, Salzburg is going to win that one. But it would be so great if my team can dethrone Salzburg. That's why the games are being played. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.